How did you spend your first few years as an actor? And then how do you spend them now? Good question. Um, my first few years as an actor was hard work. It was, um, you know, I tell my actors the story about eating eggs, water, and donuts, but making sure I had money for my acting class. I didn't even have a car, but I would take the bus to get there. Didn't know how I would get home, but God blessed me with someone who would give me a ride. Um, it was all about just being the best that I could possibly be. I wanted to be in the ranks of the leading men of my caliber, Denzel, Wesley Snipes, Cuba Gooding. Those were the scenes I worked on, and I knew who I was as an actor, and I, I worked towards playing those authoritative roles. I didn't have a problem playing thugs or you know, gang bangers and stuff. I love those characters. Those are the guys I grew up with, so I understand it. But um, I've never been jaded in the sense of like not having the opportunity to play certain roles. Look, listen, in my beginning of an act as being an actor, I worked on as many roles as I possibly could. If the roles didn't exist, I wrote them and I would bring them into class. And so for me, it was just being the best that I possibly could be to understand the process of acting and to be great at it and to be a joy to be around because I understood that's how people continue to work with you. Where I'm at now as an actor, uh, I really don't care for the auditioning process. I don't care for it. I do it. Um, my manager's always on me about it, so I do it. I go in. Um, one of the things that make, made me not care for it is knowing the politics behind it because I'm a producer and a director now. I know what I didn't know back then when I was just acting. And that is sometimes even if you're auditioning for a role, you're already not going to get it because they, they may be on the phone talking to the person that they just offered the role to. So that's kind of tough. And where I'm at now, I create my own content. I direct, I write. Um, and I have people who call me up and put me in projects because they remember me as an actor and they remember my work. So it, it, it can be a little funny sometimes for me because it's like, all right, listen, do I really want to waste the time and audition for something that I may not get? Um, or, you know, do I just continue to do the process because that's what that is, is audition is part of the acting process. Eh, I don't know. Um, where I'm at now, um, I just love having something that I write or someone write for me and say, hey, just come do this. It's easier. There's no pressure. There's no stress about it. And I enjoy that a little bit more than, yeah, I've never been a competitive person. Even in the martial arts, you know, fighting in tournaments wasn't for me. Um, so with acting, I don't look at it as competition. I look at it, like I said, it's love. There can't be competition in love. So I, if, if the role is right for me, give it to me. I'll show up for you and I'll do a great job. You think that audition grind is what sends a lot of people home or somewhere else? Somewhat. I think um, what sends people home mostly is lack of money. People get into the entertainment industry thinking that they're going to make a lot of money. And I always tell actors, if you got into the entertainment industry to make money, you can do anything else. I mean, you can do porn and make a lot of money. Acting, eh, it's a love-hate relationship for some people because, you know, they may have got out of college or they left a corporate job or they left pharmaceuticals. I knew an actor who was a rocket scientist, but he wasn't happy unless he was doing acting. And they get into the acting world and they want to make a lot of money and two, three years go by, four years, maybe five, and they're not making any money. They're working a dead end job and they start to battle with that. And so I think typically that's usually what sends people home. The auditioning process has a different experience. Um, when you hear these stories of like uh, Angelina Jolie or uh, Mark Ruffalo, <laughs> they said he went out 50 times until he got his first role. I, I, I believe that everybody's resilience is a different level. Uh, I didn't have to go out 50 times. I, I think I went out three times and I booked my third audition. I didn't, yeah, I, I, I was that type of actor. Um, but I could see how the, the rejection, because like, like I said, everybody's looking for love. And even if you are going out for somebody that you, you like or you're attracted to and you get that rejection, there's a, there's a thing you go through. There's a catharsis. There's a, there's a hurtful period you go through. And I think 
if you're going out for auditions and you may be right for them and you're being told no and no and no, you start to question yourself, is this right for me? Is this really what I should be doing? Listen, if we're all climbing up a mountain, we don't know what's at the top of the mountain until we get there. The climb is just part of the journey. Auditions are just part of the journey. And I believe that, I do believe that there's a point where actors need to know if they are auditioning actors or not, which basically means this. If you go in and you cannot defeat the nervousness, maybe auditioning is not for you, unless it helps you to book the audition. Maybe being nervous books that audition. Maybe you go in, you, you feel like you did a horrible job, and then you get the call back and you, you book it. You're like, I was horrible. That happens. But I do believe that there's a sense that actors need to know if they are auditioning actors. Is the auditioning process for you? And if it isn't, what adjustment are you willing to make in order to be great at it? So that way you're not missing out on opportunities or you're not wasting your time.